Hey everyone, it's Pete from Amateur Golf. Welcome to The Notebook. This week, we've got Andy Ogletree, the 2019 U.S. Amateur Champion. We take a look at social media and podcasts you should be following, review the Mevo Plus, which can allow you to play golf at home during these self-quarantine times, and on top of that, some great Callaway podcasts, and we appreciate Callaway's continued sponsorship of our site. As a website that's related to tournament golf, you can imagine things have slowed down a little for us. We are keeping all our employees, and just a note that anybody that purchases a three-year, five-year, or lifetime membership between now and the end of April, you get this really cool eco vessel, um, water bottle, and they're luxury. They're really nice, stainless steel. We custom designed these with the folks in uh, Boulder, Colorado, and we will send these to you, shipping included, $30 value with any three, five year or lifetime membership. We really appreciate those of you that have already renewed or purchased a new one this month. So uh, keep those coming. Thank you for your support and welcome to The Notebook. Okay, I'm bored in a house and I'm in a house boy. boy. Bored in a house and I'm in a house boy. boy. Bored in a muff and I was bored and I'm bored. <laughs> and welcome to another episode of Tournament Talk with AmateurGolf.com. And this week we have a special episode with reigning U.S. Amateur Champion Andy Ogletree. As the reigning U.S. Amateur Champion, Andy Ogletree was scheduled to have a tee time for the first two rounds of the 2020 Masters with defending champion Tiger Woods. Just ponder that for a second. The world has changed over the last few weeks due to the growing pandemic and sadly the Masters, along with professional, amateur, college, and junior golf are all on pause. In this week's tournament talk, we chat with 2019 U.S. Amateur Champion Andy Ogletree about his historic comeback this past summer on Pinehurst Number 2. We talk a bit about how he's coping with his forced time off from competition, and we get a chance to meet a genuinely nice guy with a very positive outlook on life. And now, here's Pete. I've got the pleasure of uh, hosting today Andy Ogletree on AmateurGolf.com's tournament talk, and Andy... Uh, Third player from Georgia Tech to win the U.S. Amateur last year at Pinehurst. Beat John Augustine in a final match. Really good comeback. And um, you're a senior at Georgia Tech, and you're faced with the cancellation of the NCAA season. So we're hoping to talk to you a little bit about that and some of your plans, potential to turn pro, anything else you want to tell the public about Andy Ogletree. Also, the first guy from, guy from Mississippi to win the U.S. Amateur, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that's right. So, Andy, walk me through where you were when you found the news. You're a senior at Georgia Tech, one of the top-ranked teams in the country, and you find out that your season and your school year is canceled. Um, so we were we were at our Georgia Tech practice facility. Um, I guess it was me and, like, five other guys and our assistant coach. And um, our assistant coach got a phone call, and it was the phone call saying that um, all NCAA championships have been canceled. Um, for the spring semester 
And so we all kind of didn't even really know what to think. Um, obviously, one can assume that from that, you can kind of put two and two together and figure out that that pretty much means the rest of the season's canceled. So um, shortly after that, we got a, a text from Coach Hepler saying, everyone come to the practice facility. We're going to have a team meeting. And he basically told us that and uh, told us that he thinks – everything will probably eventually get canceled if if they're not going to have an NCAA championship. It's not looking good for the rest of the season. So um, we were getting ready to leave the next day for a tournament. Um, everybody was kind of feeling pretty good, and we had a really good team, three seniors, um, a junior and a sophomore that have all played really well. And we were kind of trending in the right dire- direction, we thought. It was going to be really good spring, and uh, but the news hit us pretty hard. And, I mean – you, you come here to try to to try to play a national championship and to try to win, and um, we thought this was a really good chance for us, and we really felt confident about where we were heading this year, and that's kind of taken away now. So um, we've had a little, a little time to reflect now, and uh, I think the more it sets in, kind of the worse feeling it leaves. But um, right now, don't really don't really know many answers, and. We're just trying to learn as much as we can and stay as positive, positive as we can. We still have a few guys that have hung around Atlanta, so we're still hanging out and practicing together. And um, everything's practice-wise is still kind of normal. Um, there's a few courses that are shut down, and um, living conditions are a little different, but uh, we're still able to practice, and we're still able to have that team bonding that we've we always have. So. Um, yeah, there's not not many answers right now. Yeah, it sounds like you're seeking respite in golf, which is good, but you don't really have anything to prepare for immediately. Your life was turned around. Exactly, um, yeah. We're just kind of preparing for unknown. We don't really know what we're preparing for. Right, but you have a lot to prepare for because, you know, if the U.S. Open ends up getting played, you're exempt. Now, we know the Masters yeah. is going to get postponed and hopefully get played later in the year. And you're also yeah. exempt into the Open Championship of, of, you know, over in the UK. So wh- what does that do to your plans to potentially turn professional or to even you know, potentially return as your eligibility would be opened according to NCAA's recent decision? Um, have you made any of those decisions yet? And I don't want to put any hard questions in front of you, but you're pondering a lot of stuff right now. Yeah, I mean, obviously my mind's racing. I'm trying to talk to a lot of people and get a lot of, an- a lot of answers, but... Honestly, uh, there's there's nobody that really knows when the PGA Tour season is going to be going to start back up. There's no one who knows um, for sure if the U.S. Open is going to be played. There's no one for sure that knows the British Open is going to get played because no one knows when the tournaments are even going to start back. So, um, yeah, I do have a lot of stuff to look forward to is if it all goes as planned and everything stays on schedule. But um, for now, I'm not really... I'm not going to, I guess, get my hopes up, so to speak, on making a plan or um, getting a schedule because right now there's just too much unknown. So uh, I'm honestly just trying to, whenever whenever that day comes when golf is back to normal, I'm just, I'm going to be ready. That's just kind of the outlook I've had on it. And um, whether that be professional tournaments or amateur tournaments, um, I want my golf game to be in the same place, so it doesn't really doesn't really matter to me. I'm just ready to play golf tournaments again. Sounds like the attitude of a U.S. amateur champion, and you know this isn't Corona talk we're on here. We want to make this a little bit upbeat. Let's let's put it this way: we all want this thing to go away, but we all are realistic. It's not going to go away overnight. Somewhere between lasting forever and being done with the click of a, of a fingers is the truth. And what yeah. we what we hope is going to happen, for not only for you, but for the PGA Tour, for all golf fans and golfers everywhere, we hope that there's going to be a season, it's going to be delayed, and a lot of things are going to get compressed. So I guarantee you're going to have all sorts of opportunities to play in amateur tournaments as an amateur, in professional tournaments as an amateur, or in professional tournaments as a pro. To wh- whatever you decide to do, I'm sure you're going to have a chance to do it. But it's all made possible at least some of it was made possible, these exemptions, by winning the U.S. Amateur. So let's take a step back to August of 2019. You're four down after five holes against a fine player, and yet 
you had seen some tweets that said maybe he deserves to be there and it wasn't sure if you deserve to be there. It sounded like you got a little bit of motivation from that. Yeah, um, I guess the night before I saw some tweets that um, there was some stuff going around that the, only one of the players um, has credibility to his name and stuff like that. And that doesn't set well with me. I mean, I'm a, I'm a competitor. I'm a competitive guy. I always have been. And uh, winning is winning a golf term has kind of been the priority of what I do forever. So, um, that didn't, that didn't set well with me. And I was just focused on winning the golf tournament. I didn't, I wasn't worried about the first four holes, the first 10 holes. Um, I knew it was going to be a long day. John's a great player and 36 holes is a lot of golf. So whoever plays the best over 36 holes is going to win that match. So, I mean, I've been asked a lot about um, being four down through five and I I keep telling everyone I I never thought I was going to lose. Um, I kept telling myself 36 holes is a lot of golf and um, let's just, let's just focus on one shot at a time. And um, if it's good enough at the end, it's, it's good enough. If not, I'll be fine with it because I tried my hardest. So um, over the end, course of the day i mean i think i won four out of the last seven holes so people could say oh what about winning four out of the last seven holes but they didn't they said uh how did it feel being four down through five so there's different runs like that in match play Um, obviously you don't run win four or five in a row um it doesn't it doesn't really matter if it's early in the round or late in the round over the course of the day It, it just matters what's on the what's on the scoreboard. So um, I just, I really felt like I stayed one shot at a time, well, one really, hole at a time. You never, really did. Never beat myself. You really did. You had uh, some opportunities late in the day when you were really squaring things up in that match. And, you know, he took driver out on the 31st hole. You laid yeah. up with an iron, you hit a wedge on there. You played the hole your way and you made the birdie. And then on 16, which was the 30, third or 34th hole you could have easily not made a 10 footer and been even standing on the 17th tee and yet you can the probably the biggest 10 footer in your life right yeah definitely it was uh i think back to that putt a lot it was uh, probably the biggest biggest shot of my life honestly um if i if i miss that putt it's all square and he has the momentum with two to play so I, i think that was definitely the biggest moment of my life is Stepping in there and making that putt, it gave me a lot of confidence going forward. So I'm here at FlightScope, and this company makes one of the top end launch monitors in the entire business. Used by Bryson DeChambeau, used by countless PGA pros, club pros, teachers, but they also have an amazing set of products for everybody. There's a Mevo, which is $500 launch monitor. And now at the PGA show, they unveiled the Mevo Plus. We're gonna talk about that. It comes preloaded with like, how many courses, five, seven? five golf courses in a two thousand dollar package and you can do all the launch monitor stuff on the range i'm sold already so the mevo plus is a new um mevo family product that we launched at the show on monday um 16 data parameters uh connects to our fs golf app which allows you to do video and data overlay as well as share on all your social media platforms and then it comes with a great e6 package which is the five golf courses one mini game and 17 driving ranges so um, you can also do putting and simulation so you can literally play the entire golf course to include chipping and putting now everybody can't afford a full bay in their house although i think it's really cool and it's not that big a deal to do it if you have the space but what about putting it plugging into a large screen monitor and having a smaller net something like that 
Yeah, so because E6 connects to your uh, iPhone or your iPad, you can actually, you can even play this outdoors on the range. Or like you said, if you have a, you know, a screen and that return, whatever the case may be, you can just literally play your game and just watch it on your device. Right, so more than half the country lives in cold weather areas. We're always looking for ways to try to incent ourselves to play golf and practice during the off season. Here's one of them. But let's get to the basics of what a launch monitor is and why a competitive golfer should use a launch monitor and how these personal launch monitors now give you data that you previously would have had to spend over 10000 for. Yeah, so I, I think it just it's uh, it's great for the consumer to understand one what how they're actually hitting the golf ball. So now they have better awareness that you know how far am I actually carrying my seven iron? What is the spin rate? What happens if I'm playing in different conditions? So you got more awareness so that you can attack the golf course better and you can become better. And you know we we pride ourselves on providing the customer performance data that they can trust. You're gapping your wedges. You're doing things that in the old days you had to go out and pace off and get a caddy to help you out. Now you can do this on your own. It's really amazing. So thank you for creating these products, bringing the price point down for all of us. And I look forward to telling our consumers how to buy FlightScope Mevo Plus. Welcome to the Callaway Golf Podcast, part of the Callaway Podcast Network. Here's your host, Jeff Newbarth. Man, you think we can get a better oh, name? Oh, no. What was that? <laughs> Do you know what I just realized? What? I printed rundowns and I left them on the printer. All right, well, you go get the rundown <laughs> while I'll explain to everybody what we're doing here. Welcome to the Callaway Golf Podcast. Jeff and Lex. Xander Shoffley is going to be joining us in mere moments. He actually is listening to us right now as I do this little preamble. 